Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you ever heard of Turbo Debt? No, what is that something to get me into debt faster? No, Turbo Debt is not to get you in debt faster. It's to help you get out of debt. Do you have over $10,000 in credit card, personal loans, medical, or payday loans? Of course I have debt. That's the American way. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Turbo Debt will give you the option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. Over 70% of Americans die with credit card debt. Do not let this happen to you. Turbo Debt will give you an option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. If you have over 10,000 in credit card debt and personal loans, medical or payday loans, they can help. Go to turbodebt.com forward slash tech time. Again, that's turbodebt.com forward slash tech time, all capitalized for a free consultation today. Turbo Debt is a proud sponsor of this week's episode of Tech Time Radio. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan on the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week, the show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. Each week, our show covers the weekly top technology subjects without any political agenda. We verify the facts and we do it with a sense of humor in less than 60 minutes. And of course, with a little whiskey on the side. We are live streaming during our show today on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to visit us online at techtimeradio.com and become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com forward slash techtimeradio. I'm Nathan Mum, your host, a technologist with 30 years experience in technology, working for Fortune 500 companies across the country. My co-host here, Mike Roday, is an award-winning author originally from the Arizona area, Thank goodness he moved here. Mike's a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology. Mike's here to help me from geeking out while providing insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. He says he doesn't, he says he's not a technologist, but as we talked about pre show here, he's absolutely a technologist. Uh, much more than I didn't it, say I yeah, wasn't a technologist. Yeah, that's what I you just were saying. said that I'm not as. I don't favor it as yeah, much. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, we are friends from a different backgrounds, but we bring the best show technology, the best technology show possible each week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Welcome, everyone. Let's start today's show. Now on today's show. Do, 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 do. All right. Today on Tech Time with Nathan Mum. You know, I'm getting to be more of a technologist just by being on this show. You, but you were a technologist before that. You, yeah. know, you have Xbox. You got Steam accounts. You got PC uh, yeah, games. I, I you got, oh, yeah. You, okay. All right. Today on <laughs> Tech Time, we're going to be talking about TikTok opens Dublin data center to ease the Chinese spying fears. We're going to be talking a little bit about that. TikTok's doing something that nobody else has done. They're going to actually, in our story, we're going to learn about that. I'm kind of a TikTok hero, right? I kind of like TikTok compared to some of the other social media apps. So I'm just going to come from a little bit. TikTok hero? Well, I kind of, we're going to talk about it and we're going to see what TikTok is doing that no other data center has done year to date. All right. And did, then. Did that the jukebox hero song go off in your head when you said that? Jukebox hero. TikTok yeah, hero. All right. Okay. Here, here we go. Now, should we be scared or excited about AI technology? One film director is warning the world about AI. And we have a hands-on review of Nintendo Live 2023 from one of the many weekend geek events that I attended. And also, how did Amazon end up to be our fail of the week? We're going to be talking about that. And, of course, back by popular demand, our letter segment is here. So we're going to be talking about emails that are sent to me throughout the week that are phishing email attacks. Pretty pretty interesting. We got some pretty in-depth ones. This, uh, well, that's because this you actually engage them. I do, and I click on them. I've got screenshots like you, and like printouts. Like you, you're not supposed to do. Yeah, that's correct. So I, I got some Don't interesting Don't do what stories. Nathan does. That's, that's right. Nathan and it is just do what I say, not what I do. There you go. 
We have, of course, our standard features, including Mike's mesmerizing moment. Are you going to mes- mesmerize us, Mike? I have no idea. All right, technology <laughs> fail of the Don't week. Don't shake your head. Hey, and yes. a possible <laughs> Nathan Nugget. And as always, we have our pick of the day whiskey tasting. During the commercials, we're going to see if our whiskey pick gets zero, one, or two thumbs up by the end of the show. So sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time for the latest headline in the world of technology. Here are our top technology stories of the week. All right. TikTok opens a Dublin data center to ease Chinese spying fears. Let's go now to our CIN reporter for more details on this subject. Popular video sharing app TikTok opened its first European data center in Ireland with a price tag of $500 million. There's been intense pressure on TikTok's Chinese parent company over national security risks. The data center in Ireland will store all of Europe's user data, creating hundreds of new jobs. It will also enable faster loading time on the app. Ireland is one of Europe's biggest data hubs, hosting operations for major technology companies. All right, so a bunch to talk about. So they are set up their first European data center, right? So this is to alleviate the fears from everybody saying that China has the data. Okay, right? that's just China owns TikTok. Well, no, because right? the owners of ByteDance, ByteDance owners, uh, originated in China, and so that is the parent company that owns TikTok. So ByteDance, so ByteDance is a Chinese firm. It's a Chinese firm. It's a company that was established in China. Just and ByteDance as if, owns TikTok. That is correct. Okay, but let's see what they're actually doing. So essentially, what they've done is they've taken all of their data out of Beijing. Mm-hmm. All right. The video sharing giant is allowing all European security companies access to audit cybersecurity and data protection controls. So they're dumping the data in uh, the project, which is called Project Clover, which just finished. And they're also running a parallel project that's happening in Texas as we go right now, too. They're supposed to have similar measures in the U.S. that will be available in the next year. So they're allowing data center information and cybersecurity and privacy ground experts to come on in to verify that the data is being stored locally, specifically in the UK, because that's a part of the UK government, uh, European Parliament uh, Commission for the EU Council to have data within the European Union stay there. And they're keeping the data. Now, no one else, Microsoft doesn't do this, Facebook doesn't do this, nobody else has a data center that collects the information and allows people to store and look independently at scrutiny of the data that they have there. All right, so they're they're building a specific center in Ireland. Yep. So that all the UK's information goes into that data center. That is correct, yes. And China has no claim on it. That's correct. And and they're having There's people no that will come on doors. in and take a look at it and be able to say, hey, yes, this data is secure. It's not moving out to China. This is the users and what they're clicking on. Nobody else does that to date, but they've decided to do that. So well, in my opinion, TikTok is more transparent than any U.S. Yeah. company <laughs> to date <laughs> on having the ability. I mean, I'd love for Facebook yeah. to do this, right? Yeah, Open a data center. Uh, let people come on in and verify that you're not selling that to the United States government or you're not selling it to other individuals itself, but you're using that just to help Byte Dance. Now, it does help their company, so the data they collect helps Byte Dance well, and their they, company. They, they, don't they sell your information too? Well, just like every other they, they sell your information, but they're not given the biggest concern about this everybody has is that the Chinese government is going to get the data and they're going to be able to have that readily available. I, I feel like you were like tap dancing when you read this article. Well, I, I was very happy. Be, because, yeah, because yeah, this is a you, big you've deal. All, you've been defending TikTok I have. this whole time. Yeah, I'd love to get Nick Espinosa on and we're going to talk we're to gonna him. We're going to talk to yeah, him in, 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 a, in a couple, couple weeks. weeks. Yeah, so we're going to talk to him and say, hey, why is it that Facebook, all these other companies don't do it? But TikTok did. Now, I'm sure Wait, Nick will competing. be like, yeah, wow. Nick will tell you all listen. kinds of reasons why yeah, this is a, a bad idea. But I don't know. I think that's I think that's really cool. That's kind of a huge deal for technology to have transparency in the data you're collecting. Okay. Right? All right. It sounds good. Okay. All right. But again, you know, this is like everything else. Is is this really just lip service? Well, this is really to, actual to action some, to do no, this, I, though. No, I mean, yeah. They, they've got this data center, and they're poking it out there in Dublin. Correct. Uh, but really, is this is this like because they're just 
so nice or they're no, it's because of all the to pressure. It's because of all the pressure okay. that everybody said they're going to have it. So they said, screw it. You know what we're going to do? We're, we're going to make it available for everybody. So then you can't complain and say that we're doing this, which I, 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 th- I think to be. Okay, well, we'll I, I think we'll that's see. pretty I, newsworthy, yeah. and, and I was pretty excited when I saw that. I'm sure yes, worthy. I'm sure it makes people feel good. It, it, it but, should, you know, like like the airport security. That's what really just does. It makes people feel good. It really isn't that all that accurate. Yeah, I should. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you about security because we went to Disney there, and I keep, I know. keep on going. And now that security at some of those places are good. And then I was just at this PAX event, the huge geek event. We're going to hopefully talk about it later in today's show. Mm-hmm. But we went through security there, and nothing went off. And I had watches and other stuff, and I'm like, oh, boy, this is just to make me feel good. But, okay, your story's up next. Take it to us. Well, talking about lip service and all this other stuff, uh, James Cameron. You yep. know who James Cameron is, right? Uh, I've heard of him. I think he's the- Who is he? Uh, James Cameron. Yeah. Have you ever seen Titanic? Yes, okay, that guy. Uh, uh, actually, James Cameron did- uh, He did Avatar. And did he do Aliens? Avatar movie, he Aliens. Did the Termin- he did Terminator. Uh, I don't know Was if he did James Terminator. Cameron? I think he did Aliens. He's the, he's the guy behind Aliens and yeah. t- Titanic and the Avatar series. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Headline is, is he's more scared than excited about- AI technology, which I think is why I got the story. Okay. Uh, he is actively warning about deep fake because of this, you know, okay. and we've talked about this several times about the, the problems with humans and deep fake. So the do you, av- want the, you, you want the full nerdy want, version of deep fake? You want to geek out on deep, you've been trying to geek out on deep fake for the last 10 minutes. Why don't you go, what is a deep fake? Okay, a deep fake what is, is a deep there's fake? two things. There's an Nathan? algorithm that produces a fake content. There's a generator and a discriminator. The generator goes and takes a look at the image itself, makes all possible suggestions. And then what it does is it takes and eliminates the uh, spots that they would have questionable on there. So deep fakes end up normally not being as detailed orientated as a picture because they take things that they can't translate or understand to make the image or what they're trying to do look like the person they're at. So if you look at a deep fake video I versus a real video. You're, you're a deep fake. What's that? You're deep fake. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is the actual normally clarity where you can see the blemishes on a regular picture, and the, and the deep fakes normally clear those out because they don't know how to distinguish those yet. Okay. okay. Well, I'm sure everybody did not understand that. Okay, sorry. So, okay. Keep on going. That's not our audience. Okay, yeah. Anyway, the Avatar director is admit, has admitted that he's a little bit more scared than excited about it. Okay. He said they use small AI tools in developing Avatar to speed up their workflow and increase the accuracy of their facial pipeline in taking the actor's performance and translating into computer-generated imagery. However, he warned that people that we can't be trusting what we're seeing due to the deep fakes and the like. Okay. Deep fake AI is a technology that produces credible audio, video, and image frauds. The phrase combines deep learning and fake covering both the technology and the phony information that results from it. Deep fakes frequently alter existing source material by switching out one individual for another by using what? The AI uh, technology of the generator and Generators and discriminators. Yep. Right? Okay. Uh, additionally, they produce wholly unique content in which individuals are depicted doing or saying things that they did not do or say. Deepfake's capacity to disseminate misleading information that looks to come from reliable sources poses the biggest threat. And that is partially, well, not partially, it relies on the human being's perception of what we think is reality. Okay. See, the problem is your brain has no idea what's real. And we have this idea that things like memory and and uh, perception are very concrete, and they're not. They're very fluid. And that's the problem with this. According to Cameron, it's more difficult to trust our sources due to technology. It'll be harder as we go along because... The looks are compelling, and they're only going to be getting better. Thus, it might be more challenging to determine the sources in the future unless one is physically present. Uh, If you've ever been in high school philosophy or literature, you probably run into Socrates' allegory of the cave. Okay. I must have skipped that. Or Plato's allegory of the cave. I must have skipped those classes in high school. Well, he, he, he likened this sort of as being part of the allegory of the cave is that we we've come to not know what is real and not and what is not real because we are 
we are more present virtually than we are physically a lot of the time. So we're seeing this. We're seeing this. And it's good that he's acknowledging this, I think. He's like, he's like on a big kick for this. I mean, he's going on press releases. As, I, as we talked about this before, we've talked about this many times before. You know, I I don't really have a problem with them using it in, their t- in entertainment venues like when they Lord did of the Rings. Rogue One. Okay. Right? When they had, when they had uh, Princess Leia. Young Princess Leia. Yeah. Right? There's still the uncanny valley where you can still kind of see, okay, there's something not right about this. Uh, but in the term, in terms of this having this sort of overlay where I can I can watch this movie and see how it connects to the other movies in a very nostalgic way. Yeah. Uh, to me, that that makes sense. Okay. But when you have these guys that can come on and like. I, I, there was this one where I think they had Obama uh, talking about stuff that he never said. Yep, yep. And, and when we and when we view these things through these screens, we have a propensity for for thinking that they're real more often than not because because our perception is skewed. And that's that's the biggest problem with AI. And you you've heard me go off on this. Yep, yeah, yeah, so yeah. many times. Well, Cameron's now scared about it. he. He was the uh, executive producer for Terminator and Terminator Two. So oh, I, you I, just I, looked at it. I, I fact checked that to make sure that that was the case. Okay. So, well, that's so he's so he's essentially saying he doesn't like AI. He helped he us. Just, well, he's helping us now. I think he's on. He, I think save he's the on the oceans. I he's, think he's on the line that I'm on. He's okay. like, okay, I can see where this is can be really cool, but this is also really scary okay. because it is it is cool that we can do this, but it's it's actually very scary when you really deep dive into how this stuff is made and what's going on with it. That's why that's why you always got to so verify your information and the information that you see well, online. You, you can't should, always. should always take it with a grain of salt at first until you can verify that it's either Stop correct or not correct. the internet. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, story number three. Uh, X, of course, formerly Twitter, is I, now I collecting I don't think we need to say biometric and employment data. Let's go to Bloomberg for more on the story. X, formerly known as Twitter, is going to collect my biometric data. First of all, this is only applicable to premium users, those that pay the subscription. What they're going to offer you the chance to do is submit a government-issued ID with a selfie, a picture. That will be used for two-stage verification, but it is from the government-issued ID where the biometric data will be extracted from, along with you know, the selfie, a scan of that image for matching purposes. And their argument is basically, look, uh, this authenticates you as a real human being, and one of the benefits that this will have, X tells me, is that it's gonna really push back and fight against impersonation. All I'm saying is X are telling me they want to, to clamp down on that. Oh, man. No okay, way. all right. So just to be clear, this is all in retaliation of what everybody was doing when they paid for um, that subscription service and were able to be to, checkmarked. To, yes. Okay. X, so, X is now saying, hey, we're going to take your information instead of us using it see, for free. You're going to pay me to use it. Well, See, I look at that and I think about streamers who um, their whole identity is hidden. Yeah. How is, you know. All right. So here's what it is. So it's only to collect the biometrical data of users uh, with a photograph and their face for those that are premium X subscribers. So you're going to have to pay for the subscription service first. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to know, so if I want to, if I'm worried about another Nathan mum out there, Imitating me. What's the best elect to that? Yeah, this person? is. So essentially, I can take him. Uh, uh, tell me, what, 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 what are you feeling here? This is this is the antithesis of what I just talked about. This deep fake thing. Yeah. So you're going to take a picture of your ID card. Yep. With a picture of you next to your ID card. Yep. Which is something that anybody who has a picture of your ID card can already do. It means nothing. Well, it's it, fake. Well, so what they're saying is that the, it's going to verify photo identification. So you make sure you're talking to the real Nathan Mum. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah, okay. That, now, yeah. also what they're going to do is it's also going to be used to help collect unemployment and employment information regarding yourself. So it will be able to be used to potentially help you find a job. That's what they're saying. Yeah. 
because they're going to be coming out with very soon. X is coming out with a brand new way to compete against LinkedIn with a brand new oh, services God. for job yeah, this is, this hunting. Is, this is this is just incredibly. Just, now, the new policy comes in force on the 29th of September. So you have a little bit of time. It states that they wish to collect personal information such as employment history, education history, employment preferences, skills, ability, job search activity, and engagement, and so on, to help recommend potential jobs for you to share with other potential employers while you apply for a job, to be able to make sure that you find the right potential candidates and that you're who you are. In the meantime, I'm going to pay X to use that information to target ads about my lack of education or my ability to get a job or whatever it is that they're trying to sell me down the line. I am now going to pay X to for marketing that. and for ad marketing. revenue so you can have that information. Absolutely. So not only are they going to sell my information to other people, to- but I'm going to pay them to sell my information to other people. Yeah, well, according to X, the collection of biometric data, a term which covers data relating to a person's physical attributes, such as facial scans or fingerprints, is only for the premium users and only those that want to opt in for this. We're not taking the biometrical data and using it for anything other than ensuring you're the person you are. Uh Now, TikTok already collects biometric data in the United States. So essentially, everybody's collecting the biometric data identifiers and information and mr musk says that he's trying to turn x into the everything app and he wants it to be the one sh- shop stop for everything online and he wants it maybe to be he like should your stop doing all this really bad rolodex. stuff with it then so first of all your personal rolodex i when people say that people don't even know what a rolodex is a Rolodex is something that you used to have on your desk back I in have the, a Rolodex. So Shut up. I, so do I. So do I. <laughs> Essentially, you rolled it. You put alphabetically people's names, you, numbers, information yes, yes, in there. Yes, you physically and, write down people. See, we're going to, we need to go back to that stuff. Well, X is going to be the digital version of a Rolodex, according to Elon And you're Musk. going to pay Elon to, to I'm going to pay to him monthly, and then I'm going to put my photo up and there right next say, to me. thank you. And he's going to take that data. Then he's going to sell it to and another he's advertiser. Sell it to everybody else. So they can find out what I'm interested in. That's right. Yeah. That's, you know, that's wickedly slick. Well, that's Way it. to go, Elon. You you are a slick MFer. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, that <laughs> ends our top technology stories of the week. Moving on, we have our fan favorite segment letters. So buckle up, tech enthusiasts, as we head high gear into the final frontier. You're listening to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. See you after the commercial break. Hello, listeners. We're excited here at Tech Time Radio. Aren't we, Mike? Oh, no. We have an announcement to make. We are so excited to be a part of the new launch of iTalk Radio Live, the internet 24 by 7 streaming service. You will still be able to listen to us live here at Kixie 880 and KKNW and all of our affiliate stations. But you'll be able to listen to us at 8 a.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday now. We look forward to this new opportunity to provide you Tech Time Radio every week weekday and again you can always catch us online at techtimeradio.com all right welcome back to tech time with nathan mom tech time is a weekly hour technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out brought to you by myself nathan mom and micro day we just had our first whiskey tasting during the break now let me tell you about what we are sipping in our pick of the day during the show today we have chosen Curveballs Original Barbecue Whiskey, 68 proof, $22.99 from Curveballs' website. We can't get enough barbecue. If pit masters don't sell out, we'd be eating morning, noon, and night. And to satisfy our appetite, we've put the barbecue behind the bar in a savory, <laughs> sweet, smoky, heated mess. Meet the American yeah, whiskey. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good one. Right? <laughs> uh, uh, how is that curveball? Drink Curveball is a responsibility for those that are barbecue this is exactly as, This is exactly what would happen if I walked in the park and decided, hey, I'm going to go lick that fire pit. <laughs> this is bottled in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Pewaukee is the name of the actual town. Pew? Pewaukee. <laughs> so it's kind of pew. Like, like, yeah, we're getting, uh, we're getting closer. To it's 68 proof, which isn't really even a, a, a real whiskey Area. What is the minimum proof that you need to be? Eighty. Eighty proof is the minimum you need to be. So this is a flavored whiskey, twenty two ninety nine. 
I can't um, wait to hear what Mark is going to say about this. <laughs> so what's, what's, your, what's your first taste of this? Uh, I just told you what my first taste is. It's pew. <laughs> it's walking into a park and licking the the grill of the a, grill and the park. This, this is like literally if I wanted to take a shot of just like uh, some type of barbecue yeah, sauce. like taking barbecue sauce, and pouring just, water in it. And then just taking a shot and of it. And then dirt. Yeah, this, this is a. This has got a. This is, wow. I have. I, uh, th- now look at the the title on it. It says "Throw It Back." Uh, see, they <laughs> they, they maybe, already know. They already know what we're gonna they do. Already know. Okay, well that was our first whiskey tasting. Tasting complete. Well, yeah, now, you listen, can't even. Ask, you can't even speak. This correctly. is probably. This isn't the. This may be the okay. worst whiskey okay. we've had at no, least no. this okay. year. This is not this. Okay, this doesn't. What. <laughs> Canadian Mist holds no candle to this. Okay? Correct. That's still the worst whiskey ever. And yeah. It, but this is not good. This is not good. But this may be the worst this year, though. This is this is the worst today. This literally tastes like you're like you're like this licking t- a grill. This that's dirty. Yeah, it, it's exactly it like tastes that. like rust. It does. Wow. Okay. Well, with our first whiskey tasting completed, well, let's move on. Can't to wait our... to find out how it ages while breathing <laughs> over here. All right, our feature segment today we bring back the funny yet informative reading of emails that we received during the week. This includes spam, phishing emails, and all-out mistruths disguised as legitimate emails in one of our fan favorite segments called Letters. And the all, all right, Mike, why don't you start us out with the letters here? Should, we, we, should we start with the warning? Uh, we can do whichever one. I mean, I got, I got all the pictures there. I mean, there, there's, uh, there's some great information that I printed on out. But yeah, let, we'll, we'll, we'll start. We'll just start with this one. Okay. To Nathan Mom at Hotmail. You going to speak into your mic, though, bud? There you go. I couldn't hear you. There Wait, you go. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> From yeah? Apple ID... Okay. Which is not even spelled correctly. It's not spelled Apple ID. It's, it's pretty A P P L E I D. You it's can't actually it. they're actually with using A P Wingding P L Wingding E I D. Okay. All right. That sounds right? legit. And then the actual email yeah. is a bunch of letters and numbers at working dot art in Nestle dot com. Okay. That is your first clue. That is probably it's not a legitimate. Not a email. legit. So if you look at the email address, it looks like it says Apple. It's supposed this to say Apple ID. App, but it's not spelled is, right. Your account will be temporary locked. Temporary locked. Temporary locked. And hold all your subscription Tuesday, five September, twenty twenty three. So that's today. That's today. There's your second clue. Okay. The grammar's off a little bit. It's a little bit off. That's correct. Let's see. Now it came with an attachment in the it email. Came with the PDF. Did you click on the I, PDF? I, I did, and I printed out that PDF to you. Okay, because that's a bad idea. Don't do what Nathan does. Don't click on the PDFs because that will get you unless you have a machine secured specifically to look at these emails. That will yes, get your Na- machine. Nathan has his little. Uh, I got a machine that I format uh, probably exper- once a month. Experimental machine. Yep. It's that got he an uses. image and it just loads it and then it gets rid of it. For your safety, your Apple ID has been locked because some inf- information appears to be missing or invalid, and it's against our policy terms of service to give fake identity in your Apple account. Okay. Okay. So it's a cut and paste, and Google Translate didn't do Comma. very well. Comma. Okay. Therefore, yeah. we need to re-verify your account data. If you did not verify your account within 48 hours, your account will be permanently locked. Permanently. Not temporary. Uh oh. Not temporary locked. It'll be locked. It's going to be permanently locked. Okay. And so in that document, that there was PDF in the email, had a, another link that I could click yeah, on. So you click on that. I clicked on that link. And it says, Sorry, if you are the owner of this website, please contact your hosting provider. <laughs> So, so the, is this a 404 or yeah, a 504? Yeah, it's a 404. It's an error that the website actually doesn't exist anymore. So it essentially, they send me. possible that you have reached this page because the IP address has changed. There has been a server misconfiguration. The site may have been moved. So they, they spoofed you a site, and the site and. Doesn't exist, and it just came in today. So I immediately clicked on this. So at least they, if you're going to be sending a spam email to definitely collect my information and login accounts, 
you'd probably want to verify that your server that you're collecting the information from is operational because I yeah. couldn't have clicked on this quicker no, but I think than getting it and it still didn't work. At least we we can just verify that if you did click on this because you're not paying attention, which is how they get you most of the time, uh, you just got saved by the the scammers actually saved you by not paying their website bill. <laughs> not configuring it correctly. That's correct. Well, I got a real good one here. All right. I yours? got one from Gee Squad. Now, it's not, it's supposed to be Gee. Geek Squad, but take a look at that. It's G E E. Hey, G Squad. G Squad. So maybe this is, it's, a, it's an imitation. F Y. It's the Fox what does that version. F Y. Is that the same thing as F U? Well, F Y. <laughs> so, so it's Geek Squad F Y. F Y. Uh, yeah. Okay. F. And, but its real know. email is Robert Curtis seven two nine one four two four at gmail dot com. So he just he just goes by Geek Squad FY, even though his name's Robert Curtis. Okay, I think you should write him back. And be, hey, Robert. Uh, invoice number WLDAMK uh, comes with an attachment as a PDF. Dear Nathan Mum, thank you very much for your business. Please review the details of this product and file free, file free, not feel free. File free to contact us if you questions. So I mean, I, I, you just got to be a little bit better on, on the grammar if you're going to try to actually get me to click on well, it. Now, I clicked on this, uh, the PDF that came in here, and I have Enjoy Unlimited Computer Support, and this is from Geek Squad. So somehow, I guess if I click on this, I go to Geek Squad. Is it's my a, help desk is it number real, here. Is it a real Geek Squad thing? Or is so this a clone? It is. It is a real Geek Squad paper that you would find. It comes with the help desk number that actually gets you to Geek Squad. All right? So if you actually called up the number, Geek Squad would answer. And you're like, oh, okay, well, I got this information here. What they're hoping that you don't do is you don't click on the number that's available there, but you click on the bottom number that says if you have any questions or need additional information, contact us at one eight five zero six three four zero five one zero. And when you call that number, you get into a call queue in India with a thousand of people in the background talking all over you, and they just really want to help you out, and they can take care of you by making sure that your credit card was not uh, charged incorrectly by you telling them your credit card numbers, your expiration date, and your security code yeah, date you know what? of so the credit card. This is for, so for my my point. This yeah. is why why it's frustrating because this is we we talk about how bad these grammar things are, but the average person doesn't even notice them. Correct. Called situational blindness. We just don't notice it. We're just glancing at stuff. So we we're not gonna miss we're not gonna miss a K if we see G Squad, our mind's gonna put that K in there for us. So that's that's the problem with how this works, is that our brain's gonna input certain details. Well, if you do so. call and any time you call a, a, a service, uh, Microsoft doesn't call you. None of these services call you. They they don't they're not proactive to to help you. So anytime someone calls you and asks you for your credit card. They want your confirmation number or anything to that extent. Just get off the phone, call your bank, pick up the phone and call your bank and make sure that it's legitimate. Don't just have that conversation. Numbers and That's what I do. Because when I do these keep for testing. On, I keep them online. I for, do. And I make fun know, of them. And, I, and then I, I kind of toy with them. they ask for passwords, them. I tell them it's ID10. <laughs> and then I'll change something. So. All right. Go to your next one here. Now, so, are you looking for a job? <clears throat> If you're looking for a job, if you're looking for a job, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, if this comes heck, in here. Wouldn't you like to get something that says, "Hey, Amazon, come please work for us"? Yeah, right. Yeah. So this is this is the subject. Please come work for us, and it's a splash page of Amazon. Uh, Amazon is looking to hire everywhere immediately. You know, this is not something that is not exactly false. Correct. No prior experience required. That is not exactly false. Positions in the warehouse, this is usually delivery warehouse and yep. management are all entry-level stuff. And they Amazon does a lot of stuff that is non-traditional. And how they recruit their hiring process, employees. Right? Yep. View open Amazon positions now to apply to the ones that interest you. And that there's the button. Click it, it looks like a recruiting service email. It's a, it looks like a recruiting service email. Okay. The, first, the first thing, though, is always check what? The... Return address or the from address. Okay. 
This one is info equals resources for Americans dot com at MG resources for Americans dot com on behalf of Jason Williams info at resources for Americans dot com. So that resources kind of, for Americans dot com is, is a recruiting system that that seems legit. It does. And, and it is the name of a company that actually is used for recruiting for Amazon. OK, so you clicked on. The so button. I clicked on the link. Start. Your career today. Start a career. Discover the right fit. Amazon. Amazon Flex Jobs. In what zip code? Applicants needed. Pay and job availability vary. Tap okay, so it asks you next to put in your zip code. Yep. So you put in your zip code, and then it, it has logic that comes on back and says, hey, guess what? You're in the local area, and welcome. So if you're going through this, this looks really inviting. If you're looking for a job, as job hunters out there do, you're getting really excited about this. Then all of a sudden it goes to the next page where it asks you for your name and your information. Yep, your name stuff and that, email. Stuff that you would normally do, right? Okay, so how is this not legit? Okay. This is pretty this is pretty legit looking. Okay, it is very legit looking. How is this not legit? So after I put in my name and information, mm -hmm. it says that it would like me to better facilitate my job application at Amazon, that I can type in my credentials for Amazon login so they can link the account and have all of my information come regarding my job at the Amazon account itself. Okay. So now really looks good. It has all the information. They spent some time actually doing this phishing attempt so itself. Is, is it possible that this is actually a legitimate company that's just stupid? Well, so I thought that, so at first I thought, well, this was a recruiting company. And second, I thought, well, maybe this is something to do with Amazon. Mm -hmm. But the way they ask you for your Amazon credentials is probably the only warning sign that you're going to get before you give away your Amazon credentials. So instead of me logging into an Amazon, so I would figure if I'm going to do that, I'd log into Amazon's webpage. They'd probably have some app that would come on up and say, is this trusted between here and there? And I click OK. Yeah. But what happens is when you go to the Amazon and you type your username and password into the thing, it says, we are having a problem right now accessing your Amazon account. That's so because you provided them with or, false information. Though. Okay. No, 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 no. I actually, I actually, I, I tested this to see if it was legit. And it says, so we're going to send you to our temporary login page ah. at this time so that we can get your account connected at a later time and not to have you delay in your job searching ability. So totally prying on the job searching ability. I'm looking for a job type of deal. Their webpage is completely different, and they want you to type in your username and password and hit enter, and then they're going to connect it on their back end for you. Yep. So right. very legitimate that's very, looking. That's, see, that's very subtle. It, it, it does take uh... – uh, advantage of somebody's desperation and looking for work. Yep, there you go. Well, that ends our segment letters. Up next, we have this week in technology. Oh man, I was hoping to get to that one. Well, we got we we ran out of time. We got so much more to cover. So <laughs> <laughs> we have this week in technology. It'd be a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side. I don't know if this is enjoyable whiskey or not. This curveball, but we're gonna I don't have know. our you second sure gave sip. Me a lot. All right, you're listening to Tech Time Radio. We'll see you after this commercial break. This is Mark and Greg for Copiers Northwest with a terrific offer called Printer Care Plus. It's simple. Buy HP printer cartridges from Copiers Northwest and we'll service your current printers for free. That sounds too good to be true. It's made possible due to our HP Copiers Northwest relationship. Copiers Northwest is an HP Platinum partner. One of only two in the entire Northwest. And now with Printer Care Plus, Copiers Northwest will provide free printer service as long as they purchase genuine HP cartridges from Copiers Northwest. That's right. IT departments no longer have to service printers or fix paper jams with Printer Care Plus. They can focus on more strategic initiatives and let our experienced technicians keep their HP printers up and running. Sounds like a love-love relationship for IT departments. Don't get too carried away. So how do they get more details on Printer Care Plus? Call Copiers Northwest today, 206-282-1200 or visit copiersnw.com. Copiers Northwest. New ideas, new solutions. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right, we're going back to September 3rd, 1995. The world's largest garage sale hunt goes online as eBay is founded. How about that? The online auction site eBay was launched by AuctionWeb 
in Pierre Omidar. The first item sold was a broken laser pointer. It wasn't actually intended to sell, but the rest of the test site was up and operational. Surprisingly, the item sold for $14.83. Uh, Omidar contacted the buyer to make sure he knew that he was purchasing a laser pointer that was broken, to which was replied with is, I'm a collector of broken laser pointers. What? From, <laughs> that's what it's Okay. Saying. All right. From that, the first $14.83 was inserted into the eBay company, which is now worth more than a few billion dollars. Well, have you ever used eBay? I love eBay. Yeah, yeah. During the holiday I, I, times? You know, I played with it when it first came out, and I sometimes, if I need something that I can't find on Amazon or something, I'll go on eBay. Have you ever needed to find floppy disks? Yeah, but, no, uh, I'm not like three, you. Three, I don't, three and a quarter I, floppy disks? I'm disc. not like you. So I don't, if you ever wanted to do that on is eBay. Is that where I'd find your eBay eBay floppy disk uh, right. debacle? Yeah, yeah, well, I don't know if it's a debacle, but there's uh, over seven. Have you sold any of those pallets? Uh, two. No, not pallets, but I just sold you two boxes. You bought an entire pallet. I know. So if you, <laughs> I have seven hundred different boxes. Yeah, if you want, of not, if you want half, if you want three, no, it's uh, oh, three and a half, five and a quarter, three and a half. Oh, three and a half. Yes, yeah, right. three and a half. Small ones. Double density discs because you need to write your information on. All you got to do is go to eBay and they're in mint. Shit. They're in mint condition. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you should get some. All right. Buy, <laughs> buy in the. Bundles. I still have some of those. Well, actually, uh, no, I don't have any more since I moved, but. I used to ha- I used to have a whole big box of I got, three, I got I, well three and if you need more I know where you can find some. Well, that was zip, this week in technology. And have five you ever and a quarter. <laughs> wanted to watch some Tech Time history with over two years of video podcasts and blog information? You can visit TechTimeRadio.com to watch our older shows or join the Tech Timers Facebook room to talk with us live. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have Mark's Mumble Whiskey <laughs> Review. I'm just can't wait for that <laughs> to see what that I is. I can pretty much. No, what, predict uh, what Mark well, okay. is say. And our technology fail of the week. We'll see you after the break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. The segment we've been waiting all week for, Mark's Whiskey Mumble. Oh, no. What's that? Well, you know what today is? Well, what is today? I have no idea. With Mark, with Mark I, comes I don't up know. with this stuff. He comes up with this stuff. I think this should be called something else, but it apparently it's called Another Look Unlimited Day. What does that mean? I, this is the best opportunity to go through your belongings and take another look, literally. The perfect time to clean out your closet, rake through your clutter, and see what is fit to reuse, gift, donate. Or, what's, that, what's that popular lady's... Uh, Got junk? She's she's always talking about this type of stuff, oh. getting rid of your stuff. I can't remember her name. Oh, she's she Marie knows. Condo. Condo. It should okay, be called yeah. Condo Day. Oh, Condo Day. Okay, there you Instead go. of another look unlimited day, that's dumb. Okay, well, I, you know what? I, You're okay. talking about the woman that says like, if it sparks you joy. Yeah, keep yeah. it. And then is that yeah, the lady she, that puts them in piles on your yard? Yeah, they yeah. have then to take like, everything out. Oh, yeah, this she ain't coming over to my house. Let me tell you that. Condo Day instead of another look unlimited day. Okay. Well, what does Mark think about this whiskey? (laughs) (laughs) This segment will be short, quote unquote. There is nothing interesting to talk about with this flavored whiskey. They say curveball is the best enjoyed from the freezer as a cold shot. That makes sense. Freezing whiskey kills all flavor and shooting it helps minimize the time it's spent in your mouth. (laughs) With Mark out, this is the type of crap Nathan brings in to taste. Is that what he put on there? That's exactly. I'm reading this word for word. Oh, my word. If you like low-quality whi- whiskey mixed with artificial barbecue flavoring and coloring, this is for you and Nathan. <laughs> if not, and you have this in your closet at home, please clean this out with the other trash. Okay. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I'm I, going I, I'm going to, uh, you know, applaud <laughs> that particular. Yeah, but that's not I, really I, a, a critique of anything. I mean, we all know this is 
clearly horrible whiskey right well, now, you right? you know, I don't know if you need to say that it tastes like water that dripped out of a uh, radiator <laughs> sitting out of the dump. because no, the radiator still has that antifreeze taste, right? So that's probably a little you, bit you know, better I don't than know this. that I would know that because <laughs> okay. I don't routinely go around and suck on radiators. Oh, okay, so. well, neither do I. Okay. All right. Well, you know what, Mark? Thanks for that moment. Yeah, let's go move. Let's move on from this because- uh, Let's talk about great pairings. Whiskey and technology is normally this a great whiskey. pairing. Right? What are we going to do? What's Just your- like Mario and Luigi, uh, oh no. the Super Mario Brothers, right, Mike? Yeah. We're yeah. going to be talking a little bit about Nintendo Live and, and the Nathan Nugget, so I'm okay. just prepping you right now with a little bit of Mario Let's talk and, about and Nintendo. And- All right, here we go. All right. It's a me, Mario. Let's get ready for our technology fail of the week, brought to you by Elite Executive Services, technology experts to help you out of a technology fail. We are out of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. Oh, I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. D- uh, did Nintendo fail this week? No, no, no. This oh. week's technology fail comes to us from the technology company Amazon. Not Amazon. Yeah. After we had that whole big thing with letters and yeah, Amazon and well, awesomeness. Well, and- guess what? Amazon is okay. not paying its rent. No. Uh-oh. You know what? They were, we're all over Elon Musk about it, so we might as well make sure we're over Amazon. Amazon is reportedly getting into legal fights. With landlords over rent. Jeff, you got to pay your rent, man. The latest example is on Long Island, just outside of the New York City. In April 2022, Amazon signed a lease with Salisbury for a storefront in the East Meadow. Salisbury and Amazon were scheduled to appear in New York State Supreme Court on September 22nd. The developer is suing Amazon for this past spring for over $37 million, including unpaid rent on the property. Amazon claims that it has no obligation to pay any rent, for the proposed you, store idea. How do you contract for a property and then not pay rent for it? Well, they it? signed this. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I am 100% sure in the article I read, Salisbury has their signature on But since they decided not to move in because we're going to talk a little bit more about their struggling with their Amazon stores, I guess Amazon just figures that they're not going to have to pay for rent. Oh. So I guess when you get so big... Yeah, or you think you're so big? I guess rent just becomes well, an optional thing. Yeah, huh? there, there's there's a there's a very big difference in perception of somebody like Jeff Bezos and somebody like Nathan Mum. Yeah, so Nathan Mum, right. I don't pay my rent, I'd be kicked out on the street. Yeah. I'd have the cops coming on if in I there. Got, if I didn't pay my rent, I would have a whole lot of whole lot of really cool ways of dodging the. The notes. <laughs> the notes. Okay. All right. Well, in New Jersey, another landlord is suing Amazon, and this time for $10 million after it invested in a property for an Amazon Fresh store. Amazon also faces lawsuits from landlords in Philadelphia and Seattle. Oh, look. Amazon has also tried to get out of leases for Fresh stores in other parts of the country. In May, for instance, Amazon listed six properties to sublease in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area available to use their storefronts. Amazon opened its fresh store in 2020 right here in the Seattle area and has about 44 stores three years later up and running. But Amazon this summer laid off hundreds of Amazon fresh store workers. Amazon CEO Andy Jassy said in his annual letter to shareholders this year that the company still sees potential in grocery, though he added, we must find a mass grocery format that we believe is worth expanding broadly. Okay, I, I don't know. I just feel like somebody needs to just sit these guys down, Elon and Jeff, and be like, look, you guys can't have everything. <laughs> it's just not going to work. So, so if you decide to make a lease and decide that you're going to have to be gonna, in yeah, property. Yeah, if you're going to agree to to pay for a lease, you should probably pay for the lease. And, you know, if you're be... going to... You're going to have people pay for you to sell their information? Maybe you just need to be upfront about that. Yeah, you'd think that would be the case. Well, now we're going to head out to our last commercial break here. When we return, we still have Mike's mesmerizing moment. we got to choke down the rest of this week. <laughs> That's right. And a possible Nathan Nugget. We're going to get to it absolutely. So sit back, raise your glass. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. How to See a Man About a Dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, collected writings, for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon the Book Depository, and more. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit StoryCoffee.com. 
Sportsgrid.com. I just got my new order of Story Coffee, some of the best coffee the, yes, in the world. And it is way better than this stuff. And it's way better than our whiskey? Oh, yeah, yeah, we should have had that today instead of this. <laughs> okay, well, Mike, here's my question. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to give it, though. Okay, I'm going to leave that as a surprise. Uh, regarding large private companies having our personal data profiles, how much do you think is too much data looking back at that X article? Well, I don't know. I well, mean, it's your mesmerizing moment. We, I, I really, I really kind of think that having the data that we send in, you know, I understand the need for some of it, right? Okay. So if you're on, if you're on Facebook, obviously Facebook makes us money by targeting ads directly to you, and they use that by using your data. Uh, meaning they they track what you're looking at, what, what you're you click on, what you're clicking on, what groups and, you're in. Okay, that that makes sense to me. Okay, okay. Uh, whether they should be able to sell it, I don't know. Okay. Me personally, you know, there's a lot that I'm pretty nonchalant about, and uh, one of them is that I know that when I'm getting on these sites, I'm revealing personal data. But it's kind of like when I go to the grocery store, yeah. and they're tracking your information. Yeah, you type too. in your special key card you on your, your key card. Everybody's tracking your... Got a club. Yeah, you're my, tracking. My... Everybody's tracking you somewhere. Okay. And so how much data is too much? I don't know. That's 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 not a question. I think that's a personal question. Okay, so for you... if if. If it's too much, don't don't. There's no way that I'm going to engage in this premium. I'm going to pay you to to use my data to okay. send me job leads, which is BS. Okay. I know that's BS. That's okay. too much information. Okay. That's for me. That's too much information. But it's really up to whoever it is. I think I think most people should be more aware of it than they are. I think that's the problem with most of these companies is that the general population is either not aware, they just, it's not enough of a problem for them that that they do anything it creates it. awareness. Okay. So. All right, let's go to our Nathan Nugget next. This is your Nugget of the Week. Uh, rushing me through this. Well, no, no, no that's nugget. what you got. All right, so Nintendo Live 2023, you're going to want to hear this too because we haven't even talked about this. This weekend was the geek of all events. We had PAX West. I'm still trying to get the taste out of my mouth. Okay, for the whiskey. <laughs> and Nintendo decided to host an in-person fan event, and it was amazing. So I just want to talk about this. It was called Nintendo Live 2023. The event had been previously held in Japan. It took place in Seattle this week, and it was the first ever in the United States. It served as a large convention that allowed Nintendo enthusiasts to play Popular Switch titles. Take photos with Mario, Princess, Luigi, all these characters that were fully decorated. Enjoyed live entertainment, included in-game tournaments, and it also had a number of Nintendo-themed activities scattered across the venues. Tons of free giveaways, think- including Nintendo Mario-themed hats. I got one of those. Yeah, do you think this is kind of like a, a we're sorry for you know being kind of jerks? Earlier in the year? And, and, well, this has been a record-breaking year for Nintendo. Do you realize that it opened Super Nintendo World in Hollywood Studios Universal, uh, followed up with the Super Mario Brothers movie, and then yeah, they, which wasn't that bad. I no, think. it was the second highest-grossing animated film of all time at $1.3 billion, the launch of <laughs> Legend of Zelda, that's, that's Tears of, of Kingdom, which is 18 million units sold already. So the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is like the hot video game. And now the entertainment-based activities are trying to give away to continue to introduce more people, not just players, to Nintendo's intellectual property. There's a new Princess Peach game in the works. Nintendo Switch is just around the corner. And essentially Nintendo Nintendo is becoming a... Yeah, the Switch 2 is becoming... An intellectual property is becoming like its own world itself, not just for gamers, but as a, well, a it part is a, of. It is their own world. They have their own niche. Okay. Right. I mean, when I, when I want stuff to do that isn't like based on this huge competitive thing, I go yep. to Nintendo. Okay, that makes sense. All right, let's do our pick of the day here. No, I don't think we. Need to do that. Well, and now our pick of the day <laughs> for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. 
All right, Mike. Thumbs up or thumbs down yeah, on the, I, on the I, I can pretty ball. definitively say that if uh, you want to drink something that tastes like licking a rusty grill, then thumbs up. <laughs> but I'm going to give it a thumbs down. I, I am giving this the Curveball Original Barbecue 68 Proof. Thumbs, thumbs down. It is... It is the worst whiskey it's, of the year so far. It's, it's kind of horrid. Twenty two ninety nine. I do not get back. You know what? I, I don't know what to do with that. Well, I'll, I'll encourage you. To, we'll talk a little bit offline about the Nintendo World. It was the best event I've been at in probably ten years. They had freebies. It was exciting. I, it, it feels like they're making up for for I, the controversy earlier. In they the may year. have. All right. Now we appreciate our radio listening audience. We'll see you guys next week. Remember, the science of tomorrow starts with the technology of today. Bye bye. For joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube, so check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio all one word we hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you from all of us at tech time radio remember mum's the word have a safe and fantastic week